Hey everyone, Morgan here at Svalbard again, and today I want to share a weird trackball invention. Um, this is something that <clears throat> I think we've talked about in various moments on the Discord, and I know that people who mess around with trackball designs think a lot about weird ways to do BTU mounting and so forth. And this was something that uh, we've talked about a bunch of times, and I've never had the time or focus to go and actually just do it. But Essentially, it's a way of getting a really nice trackball mount with only one BTU. This is not really important for people who use standalone trackballs where you can use three or four BTUs and you know do whatever you want because you have lots of space. But integrated in a small board, it's actually really important that the whole thing be compact in XY so that it doesn't bump into the keys or the palm rests. So <clears throat> here it is. This is a uh, palm or POM polyoxyl metha something i forget what it is acetyl ball uh, this is just like a random industrial bearing it's a 50 millimeter bearing so it's not particularly polished but as you can hear it's spinning very very nicely let me show you what's going on here so this is again this is like a, a dollar or two dollar part and it spins and feels as smooth as any really really nice trackball so why is that well we have a mount where I've put a BTU in the bottom. That's a ball transfer unit right in here. This is made by Bosch Rexroth. It's a $7 part in the EU. And I put a ring of standard static bearings around the outside edge to keep the ball contained. Now, when it's moving, the ball is basically rolling exclusively on that central BTU on the bottom, and it can make occasional contact in order to stay you know, in touch with multiple points, as it always will with these side bearings, but because they're uh, not bearing any load, the friction that they impart to the ball is really, really small. So you get this incredibly low static friction of a BTU. It moves immediately as you touch it. And you also get the, uh, you know, the sort of non-crunchiness that comes from using fewer BTUs. When you use three BTUs, there's all of this like uh, crunching around that happens because the BTU has a ball here that rests on a bunch of other balls in a, in a race underneath it. And when you have three of those going, they can create a lot of noise. Uh, and depending on how well constructed they are, every single one of them is adding more balls, rolling on balls, rolling on balls, literally three stages of that, right? So we have this, and then we have the, the balls inside. So I thought this was really fun. I hacked this up. It's in the Svalbard open trackball repo. This is something I'm, I'm happy for anybody to do. I don't know why anybody who's not me would do this, um, especially because this does add the entire height of that BTU to the mount. So doing that with a 50 millimeter ball would make this incredibly tall uh, and not really usable in a small board as it sits right here. But if you like that BTU feeling and you wanna try this with a 34 or a 44 millimeter ball, if you have a 34 millimeter ball, this is the same height as a standard 44 which is the, the trackball I ship all the time. And then if you have a, a 44 millimeter ball, it's about the height of a 55. So that's only really usable by somebody with huge hands, you know, 200 millimeters from tip of ring finger, or sorry, tip of middle finger to the wrist crease. But there are some people out there with big hands like that, and they might find it really fun to try this out. So I'm gonna keep messing around with these designs. I'm curious if it's possible to set the BTU here into the case in some way, make a little cutout for it or something like that uh, in such a way that this could be a, a plausible design. It's also, again, a little weird, probably not something I would ship as product, but if you wanna mess around, go for it. Svalbard.com slash trackball dash repo is the on-shape repo. It's totally free and open public for you to grab and use as you see fit. I don't care what you do with it. Uh, and yeah, so fun toy. I was really surprised at how well this works because I thought that it would be either too rattly or too constrained, but it turns out I printed this in PLA. I thermoformed one of the arms, I can't remember which one, to uh, make sure that it was just barely in contact, but not always in contact on all three. And that turns out to have worked well enough to give a really, really smooth action that I think a lot of people will like. So give it a try and uh, hop on the Discord and share your experiences with it. And I look forward to hearing more from you guys in the future. Cheers.